Hi everyone! For today's video lesson, I'll be discussing on kinds of quantitative research. So there are two kinds of quantitative research. One is experimental research and the other one is non-experimental research. Experimental research is a quantitative research that treats or deals with the object or subject of the research in a definite or exact manner. It also determines the extent of the effects of influence of the treatment on the object or subject and also discovers the causes of such effects. In experimental research, there are two groups that is always involved. One is the experimental group and the other one is the controlled group. The experimental group or group of participants does receive treatment or influence while the control group are group which does not receive any treatment. The object or the subject in experimental research that involve are chosen randomly. While in non-experimental research, it is a way of finding out truths about a subject by describing the collected data about such subject. And it also determines the relationships or connections with one another. Any treatment or condition is not involved in this type of research. So, there is no treatment. Alright? And, however, there is measuring of variables, like uh, it deals with both qualitative and quantitative data. There is a researcher's desires to discover people's thoughts, views, feelings, and attitudes about a certain social issue or object, place, or event. There are also classification of experimental research. There are two. One is true experimental research and the other one is quasi-experimental research. In a true experimental research, it absolutely uses random selection in determining the participants in the research. So it is randomly selected. While in quasi-experimental research, it adapts a comparative techniques in choosing the participants. So there is a comparison. Why? Because in the experimental group, in this quasi, the treatment is applied is much and compared with another group who has the same characteristics as the experimental group under treatment. That's why comparative techniques is, uh, is used in choosing the participants because uh, it, always, uh, it should always have comparison of the comparison that the group must have the same characteristics no in this experimental under treatment unlike in true experimental research you don't need to compare that uh, are the are, are the characteristics of the participants are also the same with the other group no like something like that in true experimental research it is randomly selected there is no need to, there is no other um there is no no need to compare the, to think that other requirements that it should be have the same characteristics same ano uh, uh it must be match there's no no need to compare it it uh in true experimental it is selected randomly so that's how they uh differ then next is in experimental no uh, there are so many designs no, in true experimental design, no, there are two groups, right? The experimental group and the control group. As you can see in this board, no, uh, there are legends wherein R stands for randomly sampled individuals in group, O1 is for pretest before the treatment, X treatment or intervention is given, O2 is post test after the treatment so if we are going back with this uh table or uh, picture in the experimental group this group or participants are, are randomly selected uh, pre-test is given before the treatment and then x is given or the treatment or intervention is given and then after the intervention 
post-test is also given. So, pre-test muna and then intervention and then post-test. In control group, no, the individuals or the participants will take pre-test and then after pre-test uh, followed by the post-test. So, no intervention as is. No? While in quasi-experimental research, usually usual participants are those forming a class that remains as one group inca incapable of disintegration. So, there are three. One is match comparison. Two is time series quasi-experimental research. Three is single subject quasi-experimental research. Remember that in quasi-experimental research, participants are compared or uh, must be almost have the same characteristics with the other group. So, there is always a matching of comparison. Oh, number one, let's discuss with match comparison. Choosing a treatment group and another group that has the similarities with the treatment group. So, dapat it match, right? It match with the other group because the requirement is there should be a similarities with the treatment group. While on number two, time series quasi-experimental research, no? Number two, Give uh, the participants in time series, no? They are always uh, given a pre-test, post-test, pre-test, post-test. So it's a series of pre-test and post-test. In a single subject quasi-experimental research, control treatment and condition applied to just one individual or a group, no? So. There is a control treatment. Okay, the treatment will only be given to one individual or to one group only. It will not be given to everyone. So, it's, it is called single subject quasi-experimental research. So, again, ma, uh, in a quasi-experimental research, uh, there are three uh, that, that, us uh, that the usual participants undergo. undergo. One is much comparison. 2 is time series, 3 is single subject, alright? So, next is, uh, in a quasi-experimental research, there is an example here. Uh, as you can see on the table, two group pre-test, post-test design. The, the first group is experimental and the second group is control group. The legend says here is O1 stands for pre-test, X1 stands for treatment or intervention, O2 is post-test. X2 is the uh, existing condition with slight changes. Okay, how is that? What does it mean that uh, X1, treatment or intervention, and X2 is existing condition? Meaning to say, uh, in X2, there is no treatment, there is no intervention, whatever the existing condition, that's it. No more, uh, no, uh, no added uh, intervention. However, there, uh, there is a slight changes. There, what, what, what kind of slight changes it might be? Maybe on that existing condition, when, uh, when the research has not yet been conducted, there is no, um, there is no sur uh, surveillance. There is no uh, observation. There is no triangulation. No, it's just be conducted naturally. However, because of research, no, the existing condition has a slight changes. Why? Because the researcher has been uh, might be conducting an uh, anecdotal, might be conducting an interview, uh, something like that. No. However, there is no treatment or intervention has been applied. So, in ex again, in experimental group, if are we going to interpret the table, in experimental group, they receive pretest, And then, they receive also treatment, X1, or intervention. And then, after the X1 or treatment, uh, they will be given also post-test. While in control group, pretest, and then existing condition with slight changes, and then post-test but no intervention so that's how it goes next is what are what uh, what should be uh, what should be the thoughts that we need to ponder 
Uh, it says that people in soft sciences like psychology, sociology, humanities, literature, education, and other subjects falling to social sciences usually do quasi-experimental research. So again, to review you, what is quasi-experimental research? No, Quasi-experimental research adapts a comparative techniques in choosing the participants. The experimental group uh, on which treatment applied is matched and compared with another group who has almost have the same characteristics as the experimental group under treatment. Meaning to say, in a quasi-experimental research, if the subject or the participants or the object does not have any same, any uh, comparison or match uh, similarities, it could not be used in a quasi-experimental research. It can only be conducted in a true experimental research wherein the participants are randomly selected in determining the participants. So, I hope you will remember those things, guys. So, in a research design of experimental research, there are seven steps to be conducted or to be done. So, how are we going to do that? One is to specify the problem or topic of your research. Two is to formulate the research problem or hypothesis. And then three is to determine the dependent and independent variables. Four, select the participants or subject. Five is to decide on the specific type of experimental research. Six is to conduct the experiment. Seven is to collect, analyze, and then interpret the results. So, this how the experimental research goes on. Alright? So, moving on. Um, I want you to ponder these thoughts. No? In conducting an experimental research, number one, give a pretest to examine the initial condition of both groups in relation to a variable, condition, or factor. And then after you give the pretest, apply to the experimental group a new condition. Okay? And then after that, give the experimental group a post-test to determine the effects or influence of the treatment or condition applied on them. Why we need to do that? Because, no, if we are not going to give pretest before the intervention, we cannot gauge the significance or the effectivity of that treatment or the intervention given to the group. So therefore, it is really very important to give a pretest first before you, uh, you give intervention and then uh, give another test or the post-test for you to compare uh, the results from pretest to post-test. Does it have a significant effect? If it has a significant effect, then therefore the treatment is very good. Then if the if uh, if the result does not have a uh, uh, almost has significant effect, then you can say it is not uh, it is not merely important or there is a uh, uh, it's not okay something like that, no. So that's that's how experimental research uh been conducted. However. In non-experimental research, uh, descriptive survey, there are, in non-experimental research, there are two also. One is descriptive survey and the other one is correlational causal. But before I'll be discussing on non-experimental research, let's take a break. So let's pause for a while. Okay, I hope you will continue uh, watching the video for your learnings. I'll see you on my next video.